And there he is in his splendor with um, an A Golden Suns tie <laughs> <laughs> that he's had yeah. since 1974. Yeah, that's right. I stole this from a guy from Yale. <laughs> Jeez. Good morning. Did you, you feel? You, know, you didn't. You didn't let. You're wearing a T-shirt. I'm wearing a, a kind of a winter jogging cover up here, but yeah, I but feel. You got a T-shirt. I feel terrible now. What's wrong with my T-shirt? Nothing's wrong with your T-shirt. You're looking very dapper on the Sunday. Did Thank you feel you the earthquake me. this morning? No. Of course, you were up at five. What uh, time no. did it hit? I was awake. I wasn't sleeping very well this morning. At 321, 3.6 on the Richter, about 18 kilometers deep, based up near Mascouche. And I, I felt... That's not far. I felt uh, it wasn't a shaking, it was more of a buzzing, and I I heard some, because I have shelves above my monitor here, I heard some objects kind of tinkling together, and it lasted, to me, it seemed about 30 seconds or so. Right, kind of weird. Yeah, but you shake and buzz when you go to the liquor commission. I do, yeah. Yeah. So just, everything's just going to be same. just fine. <laughs> my, my spouse got up, she says, that's it, it's the end. I said, no, it's no, 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 end. no, no. These are all random things. I, I shaved my, my legs this morning. There was an earthquake oh, and there's a pandemic. Goodness. So these are all just random events. Now, shaving your legs during an earthquake can be damn would dangerous. Be, would be quite because something. Because you use a straight razor, yeah. I would have to pack, capture that on video. So well, I got a couple of things to show you. Well, please go ahead because I usually jump in and monopolize things, but I will, I will yield to the man with the tie. Okay, well, uh, let's start with... There you go, uh, your, your sharing skills have improved. Good for you. The Brinston family... Oh, my. ...coat of arms. Mm -hmm. The Brinstons, uh, I mean, I know you've done all the history, but I think we should share it with our, uh, our viewers. The Brinstons were from Norfolk in the east of England... Uh, around the Fens or in that area, and uh, they came to Canada uh, as uh, sheep stealers. Of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and did very, very well around eastern Ontario before moving to Montreal. So there is the family coat the, of arms. And the and motto the is Lux et Salus, so that's named after a dish soap. And... Uh, <laughs> And all have the and, and, a, and a salt shaker. Yeah, there you go. Very good. <laughs> Alrighty. We should explain that Brinston is 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 what I've been calling you as a joke for years. Of course, your name is Bron Stetter. Do you have yes. a coat of arms for the Bron Stetter family? Uh, yes. It's um, well, it's it's a kind of a crude one. It's uh, it's a bunch of bears sitting around eating uh, Wiener Schnitzel and uh, drinking beer. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. While so, while trying to repair their later hosen. I understand. Okay. So mine is a bunch of dogs playing cards. So we'll uh... <laughs> <laughs> with a cigar. One's That's got right. a cigar yeah. and a bowler, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. One of them looks <laughs> one of them looks suspiciously like like Laurent Laving, too, strangely enough. I don't know why. <laughs> does does two pair be three of a kind? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bet a thousand. This Laurent's is Earl Pomerantz. It is, Earl my Pomerantz God. Pomerantz died. Oh, did it, he? It, I did not know. When? Yes, in 19, uh, just, uh, just at the beginning of March. Earl Pomerantz oh. is actually the younger brother of Hart Pomerantz. Are you two yes. a younger member of uh, Hart, uh, Hart? Yes. And, uh, yes. You are. Yes. Ma Michaels and Hart? Oh, no, no. I remember Hart uh, Pomerantz uh, doing uh, a, a bit on CBC Radio many years ago. We talked about this, I think, you and I a few years yes. ago. Well, uh, he had uh, a, a program with uh, with uh, uh, the man who was to become Lauren Michaels. Yes, that's right. Hart, the and Hart Lawrence. and Lawrence Terrific Hour. Yes, and Hart Pomerantz did a bit quickly on CBC Radio years ago. It went on forever, way too long. But his name was Jim Appel, and he went to a, a hotel, and he was trying to check in, and they kept asking him, "What your name? what is your name, sir? And he says, Jim Appel. She says, yes, but what is your name, sir? <laughs> And it went on and on and on. Yes, Jim Appel. Yes, I know, sir, but what is your name? 
It's just ridiculous. But I remember that as if it were yesterday for some reason. Well, Earl Pomerantz was the younger brother of Hart Pomerantz. Earl uh, actually wasn't uh, a guy you would see uh, in front of the lights, but he was a great comedy show writer, a Canadian boy. They were both born in Toronto yep. and, and uh, wrote for the Mary Tyler Moore show, uh, wrote the famous episode where Ed, uh, Ted has a change of heart, it's called, where, where Ted has a heart attack. Uh, Ted Baxter has a heart attack. It's it's one of their better ones. They were all great, but he wrote that. He wrote for um, the Tony Randall show, which was a short-lived show, which I thought should have been on a lot longer than yeah. it was because it was it had a brilliant, brilliant cast. And Randall and the, was just insanely funny. Yes. It was so yes. Good. He, paid, he played a Philadelphia <laughs> judge, and his in-laws lived with him, his mother-in-law and his father-in-law, and they were just, they were wonderful. He wrote for uh, Phyllis and a number of other shows. Uh, in Oh, he wrote for uh, Phyllis and uh, Rhoda, and um, uh, he won an Academy Award. Uh, for or not an Academy Award, pardon me, an Emmy Award. And so one of those great Canadian guys you don't hear much about because they're in the background, but all that clever writing on great television shows are thanks to guys like uh, Earl Pomerantz. And his brother, there's Hart Pomerantz, and uh, Lauren Lipowitz. Uh, it was called the, uh, uh, the uh, Hart and Lorne Terrific Hour on CBC Television. Here he is playing a Mountie. He's played a beaver before. Yes. And, of course, Lorne Lipowitz goes on to be Lorne Michaels. Lorne Michaels, who was yeah. the king of Saturday Night Live and so many other things. Yeah. Yeah. So they 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 got their start uh, there. Maybe I'll let you do something else. And, oh, uh, I'll please get continue. Back. Please okay. Continue. Well, yep. uh, it's it's time for the National Research Council official time signal. And you're After and 10 seconds of violence, one o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. Do you know what building this is? Uh, based on the way you're dressed, it looks like where you're sitting right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, the National Research Council official time signal was 80 years old last November the 5th. Oh, my. This is the, it used to be called the Dominion Observatory. Oh, yes, of Time course. signal. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. the Dominion Observatory on Carling Street in Ottawa, or as they say in Ottawa, on Carling Street. Carling. I used to live on Carling Street. Well, do, do you remember going by this building? It's, no, uh, no, really there was a lot, of, there. a lot of use of recreational drugs at the time. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> so you had your own observatory. Yeah, we, 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 we were looking in the other direction. <laughs> You were looking at Pembroke. Yeah, that's right, yeah. So, oh, facing this, this, the Ottawa River. And we just facing the wrong way <laughs> most of the time. That's that's if that would be the story of my life, the, the autobiography would be facing the wrong way. Wrong. <laughs> yeah, and I'd be ten minutes late. So uh, the Dominion Observatory started November fifth, nineteen thirty-nine. Of course, uh, well, the the uh, the time signal did. Uh, not been, many people had watches in those days, just coming out of depression. The war had begun. It was important for all sorts of war services, including railway services, to have exact times. So the Dominion Observatory would, uh, would keep the time to within one second uh, a year which was amazing given the technology in 1939. So that's when the Dominion Observatory uh, started that service. It went on to become the National Research Council official time signal, which was an atomic uh, clock. And it did, it, it was accurate. At one time it was, was the most accurate clock in the world. None more accurate. I think there's one in Switzerland now that is more accurate, but you can't beat accurate to within a second or two every million years or so. And it's it's and, it's so important during times like these to know exactly what time it is. Yeah, yeah. I, I only have five more minutes to do yeah. nothing. So the National Research Council, uh, yeah, I, I, I wish I could get it. Uh, maybe I can get the technical know-how. There is a 1962 version of that with um, Alan Maitland doing the National Research Alan Council. Alan Maitland, of course. Yeah. And mm. Alan looks as if he wants to be asleep, but he gets through it. 
And at noon, it is done on uh, Radio Canada. Wait. It's done at noon on Radio Canada and at one o'clock on uh, CBC Radio. Uh, as we used to joke, after 10 seconds of violence, violence. one o'clock. And Eastern. the long crash. And a, and the, and a long yeah. crash. BBC uh, World Service still does the tone at the top of the hour, too. They do indeed, don't they? Yeah. And, and uh, CBS, five, remember CBS News uh, used to have dee dee their, dee 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 bong. Yeah. They had that. They used to call it the bong at the top of the hour. That was a great. That's uh, right. Great. And uh, CB, <clears throat> uh, CFCF was a CBS affiliated station for their news in Montreal, and they used that theme for many years hmm. from CBS, just as uh, CJD used an NBC uh, news jingle. Another one of your relatives here. This is Dostoevsky. I'm just oh. about finished uh, Crime and Punishment. Okay. As they say, the Cossack did it. Yes. Uh, and I just wanted to share uh, one or two of his brilliant uh, comments. You can be sincere and still be stupid. Oh. And, wow. and this is for you. Right or wrong, it's very pleasant to break something. From time to time. That would be me. Yes. That thank you would so much. be you. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. spoiler alert, the Cossack did it. The Cossack did it. And there we are back again. And you were there looking, we... uh, you're very, very brightly lit there, you are. And I you better? might want to get out of your sharing because I'm seeing myself, and this is very frightening, seeing myself played back to me. Okay. How's Can that? You click your sharing back off there. Uh, I did. Okay, let me just do some. I will get into sharing here if I can. I, I thought I had, I, I because I followed your steps. That's okay. Are you seeing my screen now? I'm seeing Dostoevsky and you. Okay, are you not seeing the um, earthquake map? No, I At think I have to get screen? out of the screen here. At hold on top a second. Of your right hand screen. Uh, hold on a second. I, I'm afraid to close one of them because I have two Skype things up here. Okay, do you see, you should be seeing a map somewhere on your screen? No. Do you see it at the top in a smaller screen? No, I see you and you're frozen. Okay, because you're still sharing your screen, I believe. Yeah. I, okay. <clears throat> so I should click the, the, the share screening well, thing again, right, we'll, to stop we'll just, it? Yes. Okay, hold on, hold on. Uh, let me go back to that. You just had it. Every time I try and move. That's okay. It, it, I'm seeing you. you. Are you not seeing my? I'm not seeing anything. I'm seeing Dostoevsky. Okay. Are you seeing me now? Yes. Yes, I you am. You are seeing me now. Okay. And you're moving. I'm moving. I do. Yeah. I'm. Am I moving yeah. in an annoying? I had, I had to click out. I had to. Yes. I had do to. I, <laughs> do I look? Do I look like I need ointment? Right am I now? am I getting nauseated? Yes. Okay. Yes, okay. I am. Can okay. you see me sharing my screen now? Can you yes. see can you see the map now? Yes, I can. I okay. can see Saint Jerome. There you go. So we're back in business here. We're still playing with our toys. So again, I was just putting up the map here. Let me just get into what I want I should to have got out of my Google thing. That's what that's what did it. Okay. Um I was talking about uh, gum disease yesterday, the day before, and I wasn't joshing so much as I wanted to make a point. And this is, I'm, this is a product that I've begun to use. I'm going to explain what's going on here and why I'm talking about it. Um, I've been working with dentists and other medical professionals in recent months, uh, on a professional level here for my work. And, uh, they, Dentists, of course, are performing emergency only procedures these days, and uh, they remind me and I will remind you not to neglect your dental health during this period. Um, dental health problems can be connected to strokes, cardiac problems, Alzheimer's. It's amazing what I've learned in recent weeks. So brush your teeth, floss. And if you ever see this product uh, arrive on our shores and you have a tartar problem like I do, I have a chronic tartar problem. And of course, really? Have, you look as if you have great teeth. People have, no, it's so, not so much that. It's, it accumulates in my lower incisors. And of course, people have accused me of having tartar problems all over most of my cranium, but that's a different story. <laughs> <clears throat> 
Do you look uh, this stuff up just to frighten yourself? No, I, w- I, I came across this in my research for work I do for the uh, Quebec Order of Dentists, strangely enough. And I came across this product. I contacted the uh, the chemist, and here he is, a lovely man by the name of John Gontars. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. We've never met. We've been exchanging emails last few weeks. Very, very kind, very nice and gracious person. Uh, I'm not getting any freebies here. I'm just simply telling you about this product. He invented this in his own basement, as it were. He's a chemist. He's based in Pennsylvania. Landenburg is the name of the town. And I purchased, now the the, uh, the product is rather expensive and considering how much the dollar has fallen, it's even more expensive since it's priced in US dollars. It's $20 US a tube plus shipping. Um, but I tried, yeah, it's expensive. It will arrive on our shores eventually, says John. Uh, but of course, given what's going on right now, it'll take a while. I'm just putting it out there. If you see this pop up, at a local store or on Amazon Canada or some other place, I suggest you purchase it if you are experiencing some serious tartar difficulties. Um, I've tried, I went through one tube over the last two or three months and it has shown uh, remarkable results. So uh, just to So put you up, really notice the difference, right? Because 20 bucks plus shipping is yeah. an awful lot of two. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. I'm not, I'm not urging you to run out and buy this thing or to place an order, but if you have... Uh, the funds, if you're curious and you are concerned about the uh, the state of your your oral health and if there is if if plaque is a serious problem for you, then you might want to look into it. Otherwise, just a bug in your ear, if you sh- uh, see it show up down the line a few months from now, then you'll know that it is a product that works very, very well. So a tip of the hat to John. Um, you know, isn't that funny? It, 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 and it's just a coincidence. Yeah. I've got my drugstore list here in front of me. Oh, yeah. You're mentioning toothpaste, mm-hmm. and I have my drugstore list. Alcohol, plastic gloves, latex gloves, sons of belt pants. Mm-hmm. Uh, did I say alcohol? You did, yes. And, uh, and alcohol. You, you cannot consume drugstore alcohol, by the way. No, I know that. I found that out. I found uh, that out, sure I found that that out pretty that. darn quickly a few years ago. And, of course, I've been ranting. And raving in the last few days about companies not knowing what the hell they're doing. And here's another example. I put this up uh, on our Facebook page yesterday. Uh, Calgary, Alberta, free medical masks to protect you and your kids. A Subway sandwich shop. It's unbelievable. Uh, where they're this giving, com- uh, it's a promotion. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, this has been taken down since. This is a franchisee. Subway is all in a snit over this, but it's, uh, it just... It, it it boggles the mind how an emergency like this will bring out the best in people and the worst in people. So this is just nonsense. Somebody uh, at Subway probably thought they were doing a good deed. Or something. I don't know. This how is the pathetic local, it is. This is the local guy. However, it should be it should be stated at the local person, the local franchisee here at Calgary. It's it's since been taken down. Now, well, actually, back. Trump is trying to do that with uh, the governor of New York. Right? He's going to sell him one and give him a couple for free. There you go. Andrew Cuomo. Getting back to our artwork on the Grumpod page, of course, you're a, you're you're apparently you're getting a lot of attention from young women out there because you're a, you're a handsome <laughs> handsome dude. I got a message from uh, Era Melinda who was so gracious enough to join us yesterday, and that's uh, an episode worth watching too. She's very gracious, and she texted me last night saying that she's getting messages from uh, from women saying that you're 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 kind of hot. You're kind of hot. No. Oh, really? Yeah. You, yeah. Think, you really think this yeah. big lug's kind of right. hot? Yeah. And now that, they've <laughs> seen, now that they've seen you in your tie, in your yeah. eight olden son's tie, and your your uh, your, uh, your Abbey saint Eustache shirt, they're just going to fall all, all over themselves. That's Tattersall. And of course, uh, well, tell thank me, you very much. Tell me who these two people are at the top. Mr. Rogers? No. Oh, no, it, it is the amazing Kreskin. It is. But whose forehead is he touching? Uh, I I don't know if you can uh, see the... Uh, you know, no, no, I can see it. I just... Yeah. I, he He's probably aged so much. The last time yeah. I saw him was probably about 45 years ago. Okay. It's the first... Oh, person. it's Larry Storch. It is Larry Storch. They were celebrating his 96th birthday in this photograph. This was from January 2019. Larry is still around. He is 97 now. 
I didn't even know Kreskin was alive. I thought he died. Yeah. So, no, he's still around. Both of them are still around. And it's, it's quite something. <laughs> quite something. Why are you laughing? I don't understand. Because remember that guy called Ravine? Yes. And a buddy of mine uh, at work, uh, Sean Appel, who has a very, very dry sense of humor, said he always mistook, uh, mistook it for his accountant. He said, oh, I thought, th I thought they said, a man they call Levine. Levine. <laughs> <laughs> Move into frame. We're losing you here. Sorry. Uh, uh, but this, I was watching. I was looking at Storch, and I kept thinking about the old gag. Did you ever see him on F Troop? Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. And I think, I don't know if it was F Troop or an old movie, and uh, Storch is dressed as an engine. He's dressed as a First Nations person with the whole yes. thing. And he's lying on the ground with his ear to the ground. Yeah. And a couple of guys come up to him and he says, uh, four wagons, six horses, a dog, two cows, and a four-year-old girl. And one of the guys says, wow, you can tell all that by putting your ear to the ground? And he says, no, they just ran over me. <laughs> It was, it was, was vaudeville, right? I was I mean, nine was... years old, and I thought I was going to have a stroke. I was <laughs> laughing so hard. <laughs> no, they just ran over me. They, they, that was a great, great, it was an awful show. Like, I was so, oh, but it was so much fun. It, my when mother, you're nine the, years old. I was watching an episode of My Mother the Car the other day. They're up on uh, YouTube. With uh, Jerry Van Jerry Dyke. Jerry Van Dyke. He was always yeah. on the worst. Poor Jerry was always on the worst television shows. Uh, oh, although he was very good on Coach. He was yeah. he was a great character on Coach. And who was the yeah. voice of the car? That's a tough um, one. Yeah, and I because there is a famous uh, there is a famous uh, clip of Sue Ann Nivens is uh, given booth work. You must remember the, those days. P people who are young will not remember that there were live promos done in a booth for, you know, stay tuned to CBC yes. six right. for, yes. you know, yes. uh, and Sue Ann Nivens is in the booth. Stay tuned for another exciting episode of my mother, the car tonight, mom gets a lube job. <laughs> I it, am was, it was it was Ann Southern. Ann Southern. Yeah, there's oh, a voice. Goodness. There's a voice for you. Of course, we're yeah. dating ourselves way back. Well, there was a connection Again. too because one of the writers, and I can't remember who it was for the Mary Tyler Moore, actually was a writer on My Mother the Car, as well. They didn't all do uh, Shakespeare. Because well, it was on for one one season only with with Jerry Van Dyke. So. Well, I mean, you kind of, and yet shows like the Munsters, I always thought the Adams family was better. Uh, Beverly Hillbillies, yeah. Beverly Hillbillies for three straight seasons was the number one program on television. First color show, uh, I believe in, in full color, uh, for the full season was, uh, Beverly, Beverly Hillbillies. Yeah. Yeah. On CBS. And they had, they had, they had uh, shows that, uh, that came off of it, Green Acres, Petticoat Junction. And then CBS uh, didn't like the, uh, the corn ball. They were all number one shows, huge audiences. Yeah. They just dumped them all one year because they wanted CBS to be a little more urbanized. And that but was a serious mistake. Hogan's Heroes was a huge hit. Yes. Mad Magazine doing a vicious um, parody of that program. Uh, it was... Uh, and, and all of the Germans were played by Viennese Jews. Oh, Everybody. really? Really? Yeah. Sergeant Schultz was Jewish. Werner Kempler's father, of course, was the famous uh, 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 Philharmonic uh, orchestra leader. Uh, Werner Kempler himself was a classically trained actor, but this is mm. the only work he could get. He was an extremely mm. bitter man. Uh, General Burkhalter, again, was a, was a Viennese Jew. All of the Germans were played by Jewish actors. That's so strange. And it's still, it still holds up in a weird, strange way. Bing Crosby Productions. Yeah. Well, Things there we are. Okay. For this, the 29th. And I, I thank you so much for, for putting on the tie and the checked shirt. Okay. You're looking very, and uh, my God, the, the women are going to be throwing themselves at you. Uh, <laughs> 
by the time you get back out in the mall in your wheelchair, they're going to be. Uh... <laughs> I was in an episode of Ironside. Once, that's it. Huh? That's, yeah, they're going to be waiting at the Cinnabon counter. <laughs> Here, Dave. Hey, kid. Yeah. <laughs> Here's some extra icing for you, Mr. Princeton. <laughs> Come on over, big boy. <laughs> Okay, we will talk tomorrow. Take it easy, pal. Uh -huh.